It's the start of a new season for the Southwestern Pirates, and in 2019, the Pirates will look to continue their winning ways. After the 2018 season made it three winning seasons in a row, Coach Joe Austin and his crew will look to get started on the right foot against historical Suwannee. Live from the University of the South, I'm Carl Schoening, along with sideline reporter Chuck Crazy and our producer Nathan Height. We wish you a pleasant good afternoon, and thank you for joining us. Yesterday was a long day of travel, Chuck, but we finally made it to game day. Chuck is having some technical issues, but we have him there as... It's on now. Yeah, we have it. Yeah, go ahead, Chuck. I can't hear you. He can't hear us, but hey, he, he, we are having a little bit of technical difficulties getting things rolling here in the first game of the season, but Swanee making its way onto the field and... Now, uh, Chuck, do you have me? Can you uh, go ahead? Do you hear me now? Nope, Chuck is having issues hearing us, so we'll get that one sorted out here as we are just figuring it out. Chuck, how about you? Welcome to Sewanee, Tennessee, as uh, your Southwestern Pirates are getting ready to take on the Sewanee Tigers College of the Southwest, rather, and uh, the Pirates. They're coming onto the field now. We're going to hopefully get a quick interview with Coach Austin, but uh, we'll see here if he's ready to give us an interview. Hey, yeah, we appreciate it, Chuck, and we will Back give you. you the cue when uh, we will give you the cue when it is time to go down to Coach Joe Austin, the uh, Southwestern Pirates, about to take the field as they get lined up, ready in what would be the uh, proverbial tunnel for today. They line up in the end zone. The captain's about to make their way to the center of the field. The Pirates getting ready for the start of the game here as you see on your screen there. We are happy you joined us and they will go ahead and take the field for the first time in the 2019 season. As you see, the Pirates wearing their all-white uniforms with black helmets, black and yellow stripes down, down the side, and helmets that say SU on the side. And the captains about to meet here at center field as they get ready for the coin toss. Again, we apologize for the technical difficulties. We'll see if Coach Joe Austin will be getting to Chuck Crazy. And it does look like we will have a pregame interview with Joe Austin as Chuck Crazy makes his way over. So we will go ahead and send it over to Chuck Crazy. Um, I'm here with Coach Austin. Coach Austin getting ready to get started here against Sewanee. A uh, long uh, road trip for your team. Talk about the team building and fellowship that can occur on this kind of trip. Well, we, we try to do the team building before that, so this can be a business trip. But, uh, you know, you guys enjoy this type of thing. <laughs> it's a lot better when we win, obviously. Uh, but I thought, you know, the key thing for me is our demeanor has been accurate as far as what we expect from them. And they came out really ready to play today, which is really good to see. So, um, you know, you've been spending a lot of time practicing. you got a little scrimmage against another team, but this is the first real game of the season. Talk about uh, how excited it is and what you we can expect to see from your team today. Everybody's always excited for their season opener, and uh, our, our scrimmage was good. We got to see some things that were good and bad, and we got to give some guys some opportunities. Uh, but today was a chance to see what we're like and, uh, you know, find out how we're doing. Great, Coach. Good luck today. Thanks, Chuck. We'll see you at halftime. All Back right. to you, Carl. All right. Thank you, Chuck. We will... Go ahead and monitor that situation. But for now, I will be your play-by-play -play broadcaster again, Carl Schoening. I'm happy you guys able to tune in here for today's broadcast live from the University of South Suwannee. And it looks like the coin toss was won by Southwestern. They like to receive and get the football first to start off this 2019 season. If you guys will notice, we are in the stands here as the – uh, historic field here at the University of the South has a very small press box, not enough room for a visiting crew. And we are out here set up with all of the Southwestern faithful. And if you could see here, and we'll hope to get a second camera angle a little bit later in the broadcast, these stands are full on this side of the field. The officials meeting at midfield, ready to go. 
and the first half will be underway momentarily. It's scheduled for a one o'clock kickoff, still a couple minutes away from that as the officials finish up their communication. The Pirates will get ready to take their receiving team out onto the field for the first play of the 2019 season. Again, your Southwestern Pirates are coached by Joe Austin, who last year went four, six and four on the season for his third straight winning season. He's coached all seven seasons since the 2013 season, the rebirth of Pirate football in Georgetown, Texas. The officials take their spots on the field. We appreciate him for joining us in the pregame. We'll try to get with him at halftime and postgame as well. The Swanee Tigers from the University of the South wearing their purple uniforms with white numbers, white pants. Sort of onyx shaded purple helmets with the Swanee logo on the side as they will get ready to kick it off. Both teams ready to break their huddles, and we will go ahead and send it down to Chuck. Chuck, what do you got for us? I, I just want to talk about the field conditions out here, Carl. It is a beautiful day here in Tennessee. It's sunny, clear, and there's just a, a slight northerly breeze. I, I, I know I'm no Doppler Dave, but uh, I, can, I can describe a, a sunny day like today. It is a beautiful day for football. Yes, it is a very nice day here in Swanee, Tennessee. We spent the night in Chattanooga, Tennessee, and went ahead and made our way here today before the game. Back deep to receive for the Pirates is David Brandenburg, also Austin Casieja. Prepared to kick it away for the Swanee Tigers is Brody Palmer. Palmer will take a 10-yard charge. He leads his team to the football, and the 2019 season is underway. A kickoff muffed by one of the upmen. He picks it up off of the bounce and takes it across the 35, dropped at the 36-yard line, and that is where Micah Mays, the senior wide receiver who played it off of the bounce, still gave a pretty good return, will start for the Southwestern offense. Southwestern offense will be led by the sophomore quarterback. This year, coming into the starting role, Austin Emery, 6'3", 190. He starts out of the shotgun. He has Shaw to his right. Two receivers on both sides and an audible called right away as they move trips left in a single wide receiver to the right side. It's a quick screen out to the left side, caught by Brandenburg. He's going to take it to the sideline, tiptoes it for a first down across midfield to the 45, and he's pushed out of bounds at the 44-yard line. A nice play that caught Swanee off guard, off uh, a little off guard, and they were able to pick up the first down on the first play of the season. Tight formation here for the Pirates. Jumbo set in the backfield out of the pistol formation. Brandenburg gets it on an end around, and he is tackled in the backfield for a loss to the 44-yard line. The tackle made by Swanee's defensive lineman, J.T. Mitchell. And they mark Brandenburg down back at the original line of scrimmage, so no gain on the play. It looked like he was hitting the backfield, but he was able to fall forward and brings up second and ten. Out of the shotgun. It's a direct snap to Emery. He's going to take it behind his right tackle and fall forward past the line of scrimmage to the 40-yard line. They'll give him the 39, and that brings up third and about six. I'd be looking at a Brandenburg play here. It was a nice job by him on the sideline with that opening play to cut up and pick up the first down. Let's see if they use him here. He's not in the formation that I can see. Brandenburg obviously picking up the first down at the first play of the game. 
And it's going to be a keeper for Emory after he fakes the handoff. Pitch to the option. Brandenburg gets the first down and more. Across the 20, dragged out of bounds. What I tell you. 22 yard line, yeah, and it was a good call there by you, Chuck, as the Pirates pick up the first down and keep their opening drive alive. You know, the Suwannee College is lucky they didn't call a uh, tackle out of bounds on that one as well. Yeah, it looked like there might have been a late hit from my angle, but at the same time, the officials there in their first game of the season as well. Devin Shaw in the backfield lined up behind Emory. Emory in the shotgun. He'll shift his receivers out a little wider into the slots. Casilla goes in motion, gets it on the end around, and he's going to have to stiff arm a defender, breaks one tackle, and he picks up yards past the 15 out of bounds for positive gain on the play. Makes this second and three after picking up sec seven yards on first down. A lot of fantastic effort right now coming from the Southwestern Pirate running backs especially, but really the line as well, opening holes for those backs. Clock starts up again here after the chains are moved. Shaw lined up to the left of Emory. Two receivers on both sides. Casier goes in motion, faking the handoff as Emory. He hits the deck and he'll go ahead and hit the get his knee down for a loss on the play as he stumbled. Yeah, I think that might have been a bad read. He should have gone ahead and handed that to uh, Castilla. So now it is third and four following the loss of a yard. And Emery's going to direct traffic here with 16 seconds on the play clock. He has Shaw to his right. Fakes the handoff, runs the option to the left side, deciding to keep it as Emery. He has the first down, a little bit more inside the five. He's tackled by a couple Swanee defenders as he takes it to the first, takes it to a first down to the four yard line. So first and goal, knocking on the end zone door are the Pirates. Emery in the shotgun. He has Shaw lined up to his right. Emery's going to keep it, try and tuck it in for himself. He gets it towards the goal line in the end zone for a Pirates touchdown. 11.04 left to play in the first period. And Dylan Emery has the opening score of the season. Excuse me. Austin Emery has the opening score for the season for the Pirates. It'll be Will Herps who goes ahead and kick the point after attempt. Sends that one through the uprights and good. The Pirates put up seven on the opening drive of the season and take a 7-0 lead with 11.04 left to play in the first quarter. We'll be back in a moment on SHN Sports. Seven to nothing your score, Southwestern leads Swanee here on SHN Sports. Southwestern scoring in the first series of the ball game as they elected to receive and they capitalized getting the ball first as they took it down the field. It'll now be a kickoff here for the Southwestern Pirates. Will Herps will do the honors. He takes the charge and 
sends it deep, back deep to receive is William Phillips. Phillips fields it out around the three yard line, tries to take it back to the middle field, cuts up between the hash marks and is brought down at the 10 yard line and way back in their own territory is where Swanee will start their first series of the football game. The Swanee offense will be led by quarterback Alex Doris. Doris, who's been injured the last two seasons, but he's been an effective player for Swanee when he has come in. He starts out in the shotgun to his left, Georgie Morris, and he hands it off to Morris. Morris picks up a solid gain as he follows the hole right up the middle and gets out to the 14-yard line. In fact, they mark him back down at the 13, so a solid gain of about five yards on first down. Here's another handoff to Maurice, and Maurice is this time hit in the line of scrimmage and able to fall forward for a couple yards, but they go ahead and move the chains, so That'll be a new set of downs for Swanee. Darce out of the shotgun. Hands it off again and getting the workhorse loads here as he hits the first three carries is George Maurice. And Maurice goes ahead and picks up six yards on first down. Taking their time here. The Swanee Tigers line up in a pistol formation. Two receivers on both sides. Man in motion here, and it's a option play. Tossing it out to the right side and getting a completed pass. Picking up the first down and a little bit more out to the 45 with his first catch on the first pass play of the game is Micah Mays, and Micah Mays takes it to the 45 for a first down. Let's go defense, fire it up! Let's go deep! Come on! First and 10 here for Swanee. Darris will hand it off to Maurice, and Maurice is tackled in the backfield for a loss. The tackle made there by the defensive lineman for Southwestern, Bernard Century, and that's a loss of two on the play. Second and 12. A low pass on first down, or second down, and that's incomplete as the intended receiver was unable to come down with the catch as Alan Puri was the one who was unable to come down with it. And that'll bring up third down, but there is some laundry on the field. Let's see what the flag is about. It was a hold on the offensive line for Swanee, and that will be a declined by Joe Austin and the Pirates. Chance of defense here on third and 12 for the Swanee Tigers. Dropping back is Darris. He has a screen set up and a catch of the original line of scrimmage made and then a shoestring tackle pulled down on the catch there for Swanee. Was Drew Maddox and Maddox unable to pick up the first down but a little bit of the early decision time here for Swanee. They thought about going on for, going for it on fourth and four, but instead they will go ahead and send out their punting unit. Couple of Pirates back deep to receive here. As 
This one goes wide to the right. Cassier makes the catch out of bounds and they pin the Pirates deep at around their own 14 yard line. So Southwestern able to get a stop on the first defensive series of the season, a score on the first offensive series of the season. And here they come out for their second series their second drive of the game. It'll be Emery in the shotgun. The sophomore quarterback with Shaw to his left. Blitz being shown here by the Tigers. And a pitch out to the right side, trying to get around right in, is stretching it to the right side of the field, picking up solid yards is actually Elijah Smith. Smith was in the backfield with Emory that time, and he picks up about eight yards on first down. Quick snap here, and it's just a simple run up the middle by Emory. His helmet comes off. He's going to have to probably come out for a play here as might be an early opportunity to see Landry Gilpin. Landry Gilpin, the freshman, might have to come out and play a series. As there's also an injured Tiger on the field. So the, the Pirates able to pick up first down thanks to the Emory run, but he's going to have to go ahead and head back to the sidelines. And we'll go ahead and let this Tiger be attended to as we take a break on SHN. Swanee Tiger able to come off of the field under his own power. I'm Carl Schoening. Happy you guys able to tune in with us here for the first game of the Southwestern season. And here as we have a new set of downs, first and 10 for the Pirates. Smith goes in motion. He gets it on a pitch. And he tries to evade one tackle, follow a blocker. He picks up about five yards before he is sent out of bounds. And that's a solid gain of about seven yards. And we go ahead and check in with Chuck Crazy on the sidelines. Well, they, they, we got an opportunity to see the freshman there at quarterback, Landry Gilpin, but he only, uh, uh, they used a, a safe play and now back in is Emory. That was the first opportunity for Pirates fans to see Mr. Tex Texas football as here is Emory with a nice hit right into Brandenburg. Brandenburg for a big play across the 30, the 20. One man to beat into the end zone. Touchdown, Pirates. A 66-yard touchdown run puts the Pirates up another six points. David Brandenburg having a big first quarter here for the Southwestern Pirates and uh, making an early bid, early, early bid for conference. Yeah, he was a big part of the uh, first series in which Austin Emery was the one who found the end zone. And then in the 
Uh, second one there, Austin Emery connects with him for a 66 yard, excuse me, a 70s. It is a 66 yard touchdown and then a extra point kick through there by Will Herps makes it 14 to nothing. I'm Carl Schoen along with Chuck Crazy and Nathan Height, our producer here on site as we sit in the stands with the Southwestern fans meaning we are on the side that you see. Basically, that camera angle is my ang line of sight, so might be a little hard for us to get right everything correct on what down and yardage it is, but yeah, we appreciate you guys tuning in and watching with us here as your Southwestern Pirates are up 14 to nothing. The Swanee Tigers eager to get back onto the offensive side of the ball, already lined up pretty much right after that point after attempt trying to force Southwestern out to kick this ball away immediately. They're in a hurry to try and add on and cut into this deficit. Herps will kick it away. Back deep to receive is the returner, William Phillips, and this one is kicked away. It's a line drive. Phillips takes it at the five. He tries to go down the right numbers, cuts outside to the sideline, finds the sideline, but he was hit out of bounds on the return by Peyton Lunderman. And a nice hit there by Udeman as the Tigers will start their defense at the 32-yard line. Call it the 31. Beg your pardon. And the offense comes back out, once again led by Alex Stars, the senior. They're on for their second series on offense. Stars with Maurice to his left. Flips a quick pass out to the right side and a nice catch made by the receiver, Drew Maddox, for a pickup of six yards on first down. It was a nice job by Jackson Reese there to make a quick tackle. Second and four, another pass over to the left side. This one's intercepted by a pirate. Coming down with it for the Southwestern defense is the safety, Rosario Hernandez. And the Pirates will get the ball back up 14 to nothing with 5.44 left to play in the first quarter. It's been a great start for Southwestern here in Suwannee. They need to go ahead and capitalize on this momentum here and try to build a lead here early because Suwannee's not just gonna lie down and go away, Carl. They start this drive in plus territory, the best field position for Austin Emery and the Pirates to start off as Elijah Smith lines up offset to the left behind Emery. They move into what looks like a true spread. Two receivers on both sides and it's a play action. Throw across the middle. It's bobbled around almost coming down with an interception were three Swanee Tigers and a hot potato right there. Nobody comes up with it. Incomplete and comes to second and 10 with 537 on the clock as it stops. That was an ill-advised pass there from um, the starter for Southwestern. Um, however, he's forced it in and uh, Brandenburg still almost came down with it. Yeah, Brandenburg almost got it in that tight window. Second and 10 after the incomplete pass. Ball on the 48, Tigers and Swan, or Pirates in Swanee territory and running the option, deciding to keep it and not able to get back to the line of scrimmage, called a loss of about half of a yard on the play was Emery and that brings up third down. Emmanuel Adesanya on the tackle there for the Tigers. It was a good job, good read by him. Third and 10. Clock moving here, about 5.05 left to play in the first quarter. Empty backfield here for Emory. Drops back for a pass, fires across the middle. Brandenburg has a go off his fingertips 
and incomplete. Fourth down here, and the punting unit comes out for Southwestern. A three and out following the interception by Hernandez for Southwestern. Tough break there for the Pirates because Brandenburg was open and Emery's eyes got really big and he let him a little bit too much. This one will be punted away by Philip Keyes, or excuse me, though that is Victor Winfield. Winfield will go ahead and put toe to leather and this one will take a Pirates bounce at around the 20 yard line and backpedaling are a couple Pirates to swarm around it at around the 10 yard line. And that is where the Swanee Tigers will start with 4.45 left to play in the first quarter. They trail by 14. Pirate defense has played very well here in this first quarter. This will be the third drive for the Tigers and uh, the Pirates have stopped them once with a punt and once with a turnover. So we'll see what they do here. Swanee offense again led by Alex Darris. He'll drop back for a pass scan to the right. It's a completed pass and immediately hit by Hernandez as Colin May comes down with the catch for a positive yard play on first and 10. They moved the chains only a little bit as it was a quick outlook to out pass to the right side. About a gain of two. Second and eight. Dars motions a man to go in motion. Hands it off and the running back McGee will get hit as he tried to take it out around right end and will have no gain on the play as he gets back to the line of scrimmage. And in fact, they'll even say that he was pushed back a little bit forward progress marked behind the line of scrimmage and That'll make it third and 11. Pirate defense still swarming, trying to force a punt. Third and 11, and chance of defense come here on the southwestern sidelines. Dars drops back to pass, scans to the left side, fires to the left side, overthrows his intended receiver over the head of the Receiver Micah Mays and the pass goes incomplete. Brings up fourth down. The punting unit will have to come out and punt it from the shadow of their own goalpost. All three units for the Pirates are hitting on almost every cylinder so far today in this early part of the season. Hopefully they'll keep that going all year long. Brandenburg and Casieja are back deep to receive this punt. This one angles towards the sideline and Casieja has it go off of his chest, a muff punt, goes out of bounds, and the Pirates catch a break there, and they will still get the ball starting in plus territory. We talked about last series being their best starting territory after the interception by Rosario Hernandez, and now it'll be first and 10. The Pirates hit the Tigers' 45-yard line. I may have spoke a little bit too soon as they muffed that punt, but they got the uh, uh, ball to break their way and roll out of bounds. Emery with Shaw behind him will run the option to the right side. Emery elects to keep it, lowers his shoulder and gets across the 40 to the 37 yard line. So a pickup of seven yards on first down. Emery's trying to make a uh, statement that he wants to stay in this starting position. Looking a lot like Frederick Hover at the moment, the way he's been trying to keep it on the option. He runs out of the pistol right now. And he's gonna keep it again after faking the handoff and he picks up the first down to the 32 yard line. The chains move as the clock stops at 2.36 left to play in the first quarter. It's 14 to nothing, the Pirates on top. Devin Shaw checks out, Elijah Smith checks in. He will be lined up with Emery. Cassiea in the slot. Brandenburg 
in the backfield here as another option run to the right side and it's pitched out and a nice play by Elijah Smith to duck forward and pick up positive yards. A gain of about five on the play brings up second and five. Pirates continue to work the option on both edges to quite a bit of success so far today. Ball on the 26 yard line. Smith in the backfield here with Emery. Emery gets the snap and he is brought down violently on the tackle as there will be a loss of yards close to a horse collar tackle but that, that'll be whistled clean as he was brought down by the shoulder pad. The Swanee sack will be made by Emmanuel at a senior. Yeah, he kept uh, the hand in front of the shoulder pads, although it did jerk Emery back like a horse collar. It wasn't one. Uh, nicely designed play, but the Tiger defense read it all the way. Third and 11 now. Ball on the 33-yard line. A minute to play in the first quarter. Emery in the shotgun drops back on this passing down. Fires across the middle. It's caught by Smith out of the backfield. He evades one tackle. Picks up the first down across the 20-yard line. He's brought down at the 16. The chains move, and the drive stays alive for Southwestern. Nice little shake and bake there by Smith to pick up the first down. He needed that move to get the yardage. Great job. A nice find by Emery to hit his running back out of the backfield. After the pickup of a first down, it will be Devin Shaw coming back in. Emery running the option, goes around left end, and as he tucks it, he falls for a gain forward, picked up about five yards on first down. That was the same play they scored the first touchdown on. The Swanee linebackers were able to get Emery after a nice gain, but uh, kept him out of the end zone. Ball on the 11-yard line. It's second and six. And... That will do it. The Pirates will not elect to hurry up and let the second quarter come to an end. So they let the first quarter come to the end and go to the second quarter. So at the end of one, Southwestern leads Swanee 14 to nothing here on SHN Sports. When we come back, Southwestern will have the ball on the 11 with the second down and six yards to the yard to gain. Stay with us for exciting kickoff to the 2019 season here on SHN Sports. The start of the second quarter here between Southwestern and Swanee. Carl Schoening along with Chuck Crazy. Happy you guys are tuned in here. Ball on the 11 yard line for Southwestern here as they're trying to add on their third score of the ball game. And Emery is lined up in the shotgun. Smith behind him. Smith had a big gain off of a reception earlier. They're running the option. Smith gets it on a toss out, takes it to the right side, and he is close to the first down. They're going to go ahead and mark him just short at the yard to gain. So third and one coming up here, and a good job there by Emery, who took the hit, held on to that as long as he could, and... Looks like the Pirates tried to hurry up and get to the line of scrimmage, and they didn't get set, and they got called for a false start. Yeah, that will be the call here as it will be a false start that cost them five yards. That's a tough break. Uh, still in field goal range if you don't convert here on third down, but you want touchdowns. We apologize for the hissing a little bit there as Chuck uh, is using the sideline mic and also doing a little color, and 
That will back them up to the 12 yard line. So third and six now the play here for the Pirates as they tried to tempo and were unable to pick up the first down. Emery in the shotgun. And now a man comes in late and not set, and that will cost the Pirates even more yards. Actually going to be a timeout called by the coaching staff here of the Pirates. Very close there as it looked like some miscommunications on the Pirates' end, and the timeout will be taken. So we'll keep it right here. Third and seven is actually the number here for the Pirates as they have the ball on the 12. It is 418 left in the second quarter. We're just getting started in the second quarter as Southwestern is playing Swanee here, the University of the South in Swanee, Tennessee. A long ride up here, but uh, quite a fun day yesterday, Chuck. We'll, we'll go ahead and take a day of travel and see a cool city as the Pirates came into Atlanta. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. <laughs> a killer commentary to add on to it, but yeah, one second as we're going to go ahead and actually pitch or start the – we're going to go ahead and start the resume play here as Chuck had a quick question to ask me off the air. We'll go ahead and get that a little bit later. But as Southwestern gets ready to go here after the timeout and a big third down and seven here as they keep changing it. And it's now third and seven. It'll be – Emery trying to take it himself up the middle, and he will be rejected as a gang of Tigers meet him through the A-gaps, and the field goal unit will come out for the first time. And it seems like we may have lost Chuck, so uh, if it, unless the mic's not on. So, yep, we have lost Chuck for now, but either way, it will be Will Herps who will try for the 28-yard field goal attempt. This one hits the upright and is no good. So the ball will go back to Swanee at the 11-yard line. I beg your pardon, the ball moves back to the 35-yard line. And the Swanee Tigers come out after the missed field goal attempt. Alex Doris in the shotgun. To his left, Maurice. And Maurice will get it up the middle and be stopped by the defense of the Pirates. as Dylan Smith gets the, or excuse me, Hayden Smith gets the tackle and no gain on the play. Second and 10. The handoff as Morris tries to, Maurice tries to make a couple moves, unable to shift away from a defender outside. No gain on the play again and third and 10 coming up here. Swanee at risk of a three and out here as the stellar defense of the Pirates starting to take shape here and find their rhythm in the second quarter as they have still kept Swanee from any serious threats. Dars drops back, scans to his right, fires to his right. It's a completed pass and the ball gets hit out of bounds, but it'll still be a completed catch by Drew Maddox, and that is short of the first down. So the punting unit comes out. Brandenburg and Casieja ready to return. So the punter, Micah Mays, will be ready to kick this one away. 
Casieja and Brandenburg back deep to receive. This one's sent away and fair catch called for and made by Casieja. He will get that at the 33 yard line and Southwestern trying to redeem themselves after missing a field goal will go ahead and take over at their own 33 yard line. It seems like our uh, <laughs> our transmitter is super hot. They have us outside here at Swanee, and yes, even our equipment is in the heat of the sun, so we're going to go ahead and try and figure out a fix to that one here as it'll be Emery handing it off on first down. A nice run by Shaw as he gets out near midfield, and they'll mark him down right at the 50, so a first down picked up by Shaw on the hand handoff and he picks up 17 yards as he found a nice gap and made his way into the secondary. Emery with Smith on the option. Instead he'll try to pass it as he fires it across the middle. It's caught, brought down and we'll see the officials have the option here to say if that was knocked out by the ground or if it was a catch. And yes, it will be a catch. The chains are moved as Casieja comes up with the first down. The Swanee fans not happy about it, but the Southwestern fans motioning for You know you're doing pretty well when you're declining penalties. <laughs> yeah, that's true. And that will bring out a special teams unit. It will be a punting team for Swanee. So they decide that they want to try and pin him deep and It will be Brandenburg and Casieja back deep to receive this punt. And whistles here, stop play. It will be a false start. That will back up Swanee even more. Yeah. Micah Mays will now have to punt it from five yards further back. He's at his own 40 is where he'll kick it away, or at least wait for the snap. A little rugby-style punt as he takes a couple steps to his right and sends this one out of bounds. A Pirates roll before it finally moves. Be marked down at the, geez, they're angling this pretty favorably for the Swanee Tigers as it moves inside the 30 to the 29, caught the 25 yard line. So with a 20 nothing lead, 445 left in the first half. It's first and 10 from the 25 for Austin Emery. Behind him is Elijah Smith. Hands it off to Smith who runs up the gut and he's gonna fall forward as he makes it past the trenches to the 32 yard line. So again, a seven on first down. Two receivers lined up on the right side, two on the left. It's a shotgun formation here. And a handoff again to Smith and he gets the first down as he crosses the 35 to the 36 yard line and the chains move. They stop the clock at 4.09 to do so. Shaw will come in for Smith and line up behind Emery in the pistol. The wing right is Casieja. First and 10 here for the Pirates and keeping it is Emery. He's gonna duck his head across the 40 to the 43 yard line. A gain of seven on the first down. Yeah. 
Clock keeps moving here at 3.20 left to play in the first half. Keeping it is Emery. He's going to try to go behind his left guard, and he's brought down just short of the first down at the 45-yard line. It'll be third and one now for Southwestern as they want to try and score here before they head to the locker rooms. Pistol formation here as Shaw's lined up and on the option keeping it as Emory is the first down as he crosses to the 48 yard line. A couple yards short, short of midfield but enough to pick up the first down and the Pirates methodically trying to take time off of the scoreboard while also adding six points before the end of the half and there's an injured Tiger on the field. We'll go ahead and take a quick break and let him be attended to here on SHN Sports. It's 20 to nothing, Southwestern leading Swanee. We'll be back in a moment. First and 10 here, hit as he throws and the ball falls into the hands of the Swanee Tigers. Emery almost was able to get a throw off, but instead the split second goes the other way and Swanee will come up with an interception as it right before it hits the turf. And with 2.22 left, it'll be first and 10, the ball at the 48 yard line for Swanee as they're in pirate territory trying to end this scoreless game game for themselves at 222 left. Darris will drop back here on first and 10. Steps up in the pocket, but he was brought down at the ankles. Give credit on the sack to the Southwestern defense. The man bringing him down was Garrett Womack. That's a loss of a yard and second and 11. Good job, Let's go Alex Dars. Play action will pass over to the right. It's a screen set up for the right side and only a gain to the 44-yard line, and that brings up third and long. Darris dealing with the chance of defense coming from the southwestern sidelines. Two receivers on both sides. The backfield emptied out. Dropping back is Darris. He scans to the left, fires to the left. It's a complete to Drew Maddox, and that'll be enough for a first down just a yard past the chain. So he was running a hitch route to get to the yard to gain and then cut back. He makes the catch, and... The Tigers keep the ball moving here with 50 seconds left. Darris will drop back. He thought about passing to the right, thought better of it, and decides to tuck it and run. 
spins away from a pressure, tries to cut back to the numbers on the left side, and he hits the deck just past the 30-yard line to the 26, and a timeout will be called here with 36 seconds left. Swanee using their first timeout of the first half to stop the clock, 36 seconds left, and he did a good job there, Emery did, of trying to keep that play alive, and instead of making perhaps an errant throw, he decided to tuck it and run and found a lane to pick up enough yards, sacrificing his own body to make this a second and three. So the clock will stop if they pick up a first down, and both teams have two timeouts left. Swanee trying to get on the scoreboard for the first time this afternoon. Doris empties out the backfield. He'll drop back, and he's under pressure immediately. He is going to be brought down for a sack. Tried to escape, couldn't get out of the pocket, and Swanee will use another timeout here with 28 seconds left. Great job by the Pirates to send pressure in there, and that'll bring up third and three. No gain on the play. And the Pirates have an opportunity here to potentially get the ball back if they can force a fourth down. I imagine Swanee will figure there's no harm in going for it on fourth down. So consecutive stops and then the Tigers, if they turn it over on downs, will give it back to the Pirates, perhaps with under 20 seconds left. So it'll be an interesting way to see how the clock management will be worked here with Swanee. And they'll probably go for it on fourth down if they don't pick up the first down here on third and three from the Pirates 27 yard line. The fans are getting into it with these bleachers. And a handoff in the backfield and a tackle made by Garrett Womack for a loss. Brought down was Michael McGee and they're gonna let the clock keep running one timeout left for Swanee with 13 seconds left. I think they might elect to just go for the end zone instead of kicking a field goal. But I think they'll use their final timeout here to ensure they have the last play of the half. So Southwestern, who has been doing well on offense, will not get an opportunity to touch the ball one more time in the first half. As it stands, it'll be 20 to nothing, but I imagine there could be a little bit of a prevent defense of sorts brought on here by Southwestern as with three seconds left, the only thing that the Tigers would want to do would be go for the end zone. Instead, they will elect to go for a field goal. So from the 36 yard line, Be a 53-yarder. Brody Palmer will try this one from 53 yards, and it is no good. Short underneath the goalpost. That was the last play of the first half. And heading into the locker rooms, it's Southwestern 20, Swanee nothing. The University of the South failing to get on the scoreboard there on the final play of the half and we will go ahead and send it down to Chuck Crazy. He will be interviewing Joe Austin. All right, Coach, uh, pretty good first quarter by all three units. Uh, Slow down a little bit offensively <laughs> in special teams. Give us your thoughts on the first half and what you're going to tell your boys. Uh, well, overall, I think our defense was the better of the two units. Uh, we missed some tackles and could have made some more plays. Offensively, we played like a first half of a first game. Some personnel issues, some assignment issues. Uh, but we're going in up 20, so the sky's not falling. Uh, we're just going to talk to him about being better in the second half. My big uh, favorite is that zero on their score. Well, I like that there. Let's talk about that in, uh, after six, 30 more minutes of football. I hear you, Coach. Good luck. <laughs>
Back to you, Carl. All right, thank you, Chuck. Yes, uh, I'm sure all Southwestern fans are happy about that zero on the scoreboard. 20 to nothing is your score. The Southwestern Pirates lead Swanee at the half. We're going to take a break here on SHN Sports, and we come back some halftime statistics and the start of the third quarter. Keep it tuned in. And about 20 minutes until the start of that third quarter.
It has been all Southwestern Pirates this afternoon here at the University of the South. A pleasant good afternoon to you. I'm Carl Schoening. Thank you guys for tuning in to this season opener for Southwestern here in Swahini as the trip out to Tennessee so far so good for the Pirates as expected to receive and they went ahead and took advantage of that and scored on a four yard touchdown run by Austin Emery with 11.04 left to play in the first quarter and then it, with 6.21 left to play in the first Southwestern had a 66 yard pass from Austin Emery uh, to Dylan uh, to uh, Brandenburg and that made it 14 nothing and then Austin Emery had a one yard touchdown run with 944 left to play in the second to make it this score of 20 to nothing the Pirates will go ahead and kick off here as again they elected to receive in the first half and here in the second half it will be a kickoff received by the Swanee Tigers and taking it out to around the 26 yard line a nice return for the Swanee Tigers Drew Maddox and the 26 yard line is where the Tigers will start the University of the South been playing football since 1891 we'll just go ahead and try and dig into this 20 to nothing lead here they had an opportunity with a 53 yard field goal earlier at the end of the Second quarter here, they are going to start at the 26 yard line in their own territory. It will be Doris back at the quarterback and he overthrows his intended receiver. Unable to catch it was Drew Maddox on a quick slant and that'll be overthrown incomplete second and 10. Carl Schoening along with Chuck Crazy who's on the sidelines. And Chuck was trying to maybe get a second camera angle out there for us, but we're not receiving anything, unfortunately. So not uh, working at the moment. And Dars will drop back on second and 10, overthrow his intended receiver yet again. That time it was Micah Mays and solid coverage by Peyton Vaughn for the defense of Southwestern. Brings up third and 10. Southwestern getting chance of go defense off from their visiting sideline where we're broadcasting from. Dars here letting the play clock get underneath 15 seconds in the shotgun. Trips right. Drops back for a pass and he's sacked in the backfield. Getting his hand on the ankles and then bringing him down was the big man Grant Mitchell and that will put them behind the chains and be a fourth and long here. They're going to have to punt it away. Cassieja and Brandenburg being told to scoot up by Joe Austin near the 45-yard line. It's fourth and 15. No opportunity for a punt. It'll be a three and out here, or no opportunity to go for it on a fake. A fair catch called for by Cassieja. And at the... 42-yard line is where the Southwestern Pirates are going to start off here with 14.01, their first possession of the second half. It'll be Emery in the shotgun. Devin Shaw to his left. Faking the handoff to Shaw on option with Brandenburg on his left. It'll be a keeper for Emery. He picks up nine yards on the first carry. And that'll bring up a second and one. Unfortunately, we couldn't get that second camera angle, but we are happy we got you this one camera angle. Here's another option. It's a pitch this time, and Brandenburg tried to stretch for the first down. He'll be whistled down right at the yard to gain, so the officials go ahead and wave their hands to 
keep the ball moving and the chains will go ahead and reset first and 10 the Pirates in Tiger territory at the 48 yard line of Swanee 13 13 here in the first the third quarter the first offensive possession for the Pirates in the second half Emery in the pistol with Shaw behind him. He runs an option and he pitches it outside, cutting out around right end and getting past the 40, staying on his feet to the 35 and then falling down for a first down at the 33 yard line. Southwestern's Max Patton, the slot receiver, getting the touch on the option and picking up a first down for the Pirates. Consecutive first downs picked up by Coach Austin's offense, and they're getting instructions from the sidelines here with 12.25 left to play in the third quarter. They're looking to add on to their 20 to nothing lead. It's Emery in the pistol, Shaw behind him. Two men in the backfield as they shift around. Emery keeps it after faking the handoff, runs around right end, and falls forward for a gain to the 27 yard line. That'll be a gain of six and it'll bring up second and four. Let's go, Pirates! Pirates will make some substitutions. Anthony Stevens will join the huddle as the injured Swanee Tiger will hop up and walk off under his own powers. 12.02 is where the clock stops here in the third quarter. Second and five coming up for Southwestern as they have the football. Emory in the pistol. Elijah Smith will get the handoff, run out the gut, cut out to the left side, tried to evade one tackle. He was brought down, but he picks up the first down after being stopped on it by the safety, William Phillips. And new set of downs here for the Pirates as they inch closer and will actually be in the red zone here at the 19-yard line. Brandenburg hands it off, using a stiff arm as Smith as he tried to stretch it out to the wide side of the field. And Elijah Smith able to move the ball about three yards forward. Second and seven. Shaw on the backfield now with Emery, wings on either side of Emery with Patton on his left and Brandenburg on his right. Option to the left side, keeping it is Emery and he will take a couple steps past the line of scrimmage and it'll bring up third down. Third and six, the ball on the 14-yard line. Emery trying to lead his Pirates into the end zone. The sophomore pitches it out here to Shaw. Shaw tries to tiptoe the sideline and turn the corner. He will not get to the yard to gain as he was shoved out of bounds. A nice defensive play made there by the linebacker, Pierce Johnson, and... That'll bring up fourth down and I think a field goal opportunity here for Southwestern. No, they're gonna elect to keep the offense out there. It'll be Emery on fourth and three. Go, 
Emery in the shotgun. Smith to his right. A handoff to Smith. Smith up the middle. Has the first down, and he will be short of the goal line, but he stopped at the five, and that'll be a first and goal for the Pirates as they go for it on fourth down. They are rewarded with first and goal from the five, trying to add on to their 20 to nothing lead. 9.15 left to play in the third. Emery in the shotgun, first and goal from the five. Since Brandenburg in motion, Brandenburg takes it on the end around, tries to turn the corner, looks for a block, gets one from Patton, takes it to the outside and maybe to, able to pick up half a yard, gets to the four yard line. Brings up second and goal. Clock keeps moving here, under nine minutes to play in the third. Second and goal from the two. Here's a run for Emery, and he tries to take it around the left end into the end zone. Touchdown, Pirates. <laughs> 26 nothing off the two yard touchdown run. Emery. 8.30 left to play in the third. And Will Herps will come out for the point after attempt. Way to go, the hold by Brandenburg. The kick is through the uprights and good. And Southwestern opens up a 27 to nothing lead here. 8.30 left to play in the third quarter. We'll be back with more on SHN Sports. <laughs> Doing kickoff here from Will Herps. He will go ahead and take a 10 yard charge. Sends this one way deep. It'll have to be taken inside the five, trying to make a move out to the numbers and able to evade a couple tackles before getting out to the 25 yard line. A solid return for Swanee as they were able to send Cyrus. McCullough there to the 35 yard line. Alex Doris will start out in the shotgun. First and 10, he hands it off to his back, hitting the backfield and then brought down the big tackle made there in the backfield by Southwestern. It's Major George, the junior, 5'9", 200, getting the tackle for a loss. As Michael McGee was unable to find any blocking. Pass down the right sideline, way over the head of the intended receiver on the play. That was Micah Mays, and that'll bring up third and 14.
Dars out of the shotgun, drops back, scans to his right, fires to his right, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Pirate. Coming down with the INT is Jackson Reese, the sophomore cornerback. And the Pirates will take over. And we're going to go ahead and send it down to Chuck. Chuck, what do you got? I tell you, that was a uh, good interception, but it was set up by the pressure provided by number 42, Garrett Womack. He hit the quarterback as he released the ball, forced that interception to, uh, or that pass to be where it could be intercepted. Yeah, Womack has been all over the backfield today and really been a big help to the Pirates defense here as it will be these freshmen who comes in as the young man Landry Gilpin keeps it on the keeper to the right side and picks up about five yards on first down. We saw Landry earlier in the game and there he comes in and does a solid job reading it as he's an athlete and he uh, decided that he's a Good enough to do it with his feet, taking it to the right side of the field. Clock stops here for an injured Tiger. And it's 721 left in the third. We're going to go ahead and send it back down to Chuck Crazy. Chuck, what do you got? The injury looks like, I'm oh, sorry. The injury looks like it uh, is a, another cramp, and it was the same player for Sawani that, that keeps cramping. It's number 34, Emmanuel Adesanya, and it is hot and humid, and uh, maybe we'll see more of that. We haven't seen any from the Pirates thus far. Good conditioning by Coach Austin and crew. Yep, these Texas boys think that this is a nice spring day out here as it is a cooler <laughs> it is a cooler day than it is usually in texas up here in sewanee tennessee only close to 90 on the field somewhere in the 90s on the field and they're used to somewhere in the hundreds down in georgetown and it'll be gilpin evading a couple tackles turning the corner and trying to pick up more on second and five and he gets it close to the first down and the officials go ahead and mark move the chain so gilpin Picks up the first down using his feet. Pirates letting the freshman come in and get some opportunities here with the score being 27 to nothing. Clock moving at 6.30 left to play in the third period. And it will be Emery who comes back in here. Austin Emery in the shotgun. He has Shaw to his right. And it's a zone read keeper. He passes it in the end zone, diving for the touchdown. Touchdown, Pirates. A 26-yard grab. And it's Anthony Stevens getting the completion. Add on six more. We'll go ahead and send it down to Chuck. What do you got, Chuck? That was an incredible catch. Great concentration by Stevens. The pass was a little in front of him. He laid out was able to catch it, cradle it, and roll across the goal line without losing the ball. Fantastic job by that uh, Pirate offense as they come out here in the second half and open with two straight touchdown drives. Herps will send through the extra point. It is true, and thanks to Anthony Stevens, who had the 26-yard touchdown off of the amazing diving catch. The Pirates now up 34 to nothing over the University of the South. We'll be back in a moment on SHN Sports. Well, as our producer Nathan Height just mentioned to me, it is no longer 1899 when Sewanee was one of the best, if not the best, college football team in the country. Today, 
It's a 34 to nothing score with 6-11 left to play in the third period. Herps will send this one deep and it will be taken by Cyrus McCullough and he tries to cut it back to the middle of the field. Evades one tackle, but then will be brought down on a nice tackle made by Major George. Short of the 20 yard line from the 19 is where Sewanee will start this offensive series. Six minutes straight up to play in the third. And Dars here will send a man in motion. And whistle stop play here. Usually that's a false start or a timeout. I beg your pardon. This time it was a delay of game. So three seconds come off of the clock. I don't know if they'll put those back on, but it was a delay of game that will go ahead and push back five yards. So now the ball moves to the... 14 yard line, first and 15 for Swanee. A little stumble in the backfield here to the swing pass on Mays. Mays will try the double throw and just overthrow the intended receiver, Colin May, and that falls incomplete. The trick play pulled out here with a 34 to nothing score, and it's 550, and uh, sarcastic next week sent out uh, to Swanee as they were able to uh, almost execute that very well. That could have been six points, their first six of the ball game. Instead, that will be something that is now on game film. So uh, Mays, who... Got a little overzealous, tripping up in the backfield. Was still able to get a throw off, just overthrew it a little bit over Colin May. And that'll bring up second and 15. So a throw from Doris over to the right side. And this one caught by May as he just did the throwing a moment ago. He picks up the first down for Swanee as it was almost broken up there by Josiah Minifield instead. The chains move and the clock keeps moving now at 5.36 left to play in the third. Dars hits a man in stride as he had to actually cut back, I think, and uh, the catch made by Bigford. And that picks up seven yards. Second and seven. Excuse me, second and three. Dars will drop back, looks to throw again, and this one incomplete, slightly tipped there. Looks like Damian Dawson might have actually gotten his fingertip on that one before it got to the receiver and goes incomplete. Brings up third and four. Dropping back will be Doris. He fires across the middle and just in and out of the hands of his intended receiver, Alan Puri. And incomplete, and that brings up fourth down. And given the scoreboard and given the field of play, it looks like it'll be a punt time for Suwannee. This were maybe a little later in the game, a little closer. They could have thought about going for it on fourth down, and instead they will go ahead and help their defense out by giving them a little bit better field position. Brandenburg and Casieja back deep to receive this punt from May. May will rugby-style kick it a couple steps, and this one goes out of bounds. This will be slanted out of bounds and caught by the sidelines for Southwestern. A nice catch made by uh, Southwestern offensive lineman Jacob Wiebelhaus, and 
That is uh, going to be angled out near midfield, though, as the Pirates will have pretty good starting field position, but in their own territory. First and 10, ball on their own 47-yard line. It's Gilpin in the shotgun. He sends Brandenburg in motion. He fakes the handoff to Shaw, pitches it to Brandenburg. Brandenburg has room down the sideline, bobbles it, gets it back. He gets across the 25, and he is marked out of bounds at the 26-yard line. Thought he was able to tiptoe it a little bit closer, but it is enough for a first down for Southwestern. They get into Suwannee's side of the field, and Brandenburg getting a good last second pitch from Gilpin, able to make the most out of it and take it to the 26 yard line. First and 10, clock moving here, 4-10 left to play in the third quarter. Gilpin with Shaw behind him in the pistol. Two men in the backfield as the wings as they move out now to the right side. Dropping out is Coleman, I beg your pardon, and Coleman is brought down for a sack all the way to the 35-yard line. So Coleman Kerr falls back to the 34-yard line, we'll call it, and bring up a long second down. Kerr in the shotgun. Shaw to his right behind him. Brandenburg goes in motion on second and 18. It's a keeper for Kerr, and Kerr able to get back to the original line of scrimmage and roll forward to about the 20-yard line. Called the 15. And there's an injury on the field. It will be the 20-yard line where the ball is marked down, so third and four from the 20 while the Pirates tend to a man down on the field. We're going to go ahead and take a break. The injured offensive lineman Will Spalding is helped off of the field as he heads to the sidelines. Play will resume third and four here 
It's Coleman Kerr in the shotgun. He has Elijah Smith to his right, pitches it to Smith. Smith tries to take it out to the sideline, turns the corner and stretches it for a first down. And he'll get close to the five yard line, call it the eight. So first and goal for Southwestern from the eight yard line, as I see it. They're looking to add on to this 34 to nothing lead, 235 left to play in the third. It'll be Coleman Kerr in the shotgun. Telling uh, Elijah Smith where to line up as they run the option. He decides to keep it. Ducks away from a couple defenders before being brought down back to the 10-yard line. It's a loss of two. Second and goal from the 10. Clock moves here at 2.02 up to play in the third. Coleman Kerr in the shotgun. And there will be a delay of game here, as, or at least a timeout here before the delay of game. With a minute 31 left, Coleman Kerr and the Pirate offense will take their first timeout of the second half, and we'll go ahead and send it down to Chuck Crazy. Chuck, what do you got? Uh, Coach Austin's getting a good look at his depth at quarterback as, of course, um, he had his starter out there to begin the game, uh, Austin Emery. He got to see Landry Gilpin, and now we're seeing Coleman Kerr. And all three quarterbacks have moved the ball pretty well down the field. Uh, obviously, he wants to keep Emery and Gilpin healthy going forward. And so I, I don't know, but I would expect that we would see uh, Coleman Kerr and maybe even uh, someone else at that position the remainder of this game. We'll see, though. Well, he talked about this on the coaches show on Thursday night with Rob Hip that uh, there will be packages for Gilpin as he comes in as a highly touted recruit. And uh, he's a freshman, but yeah, it's nice to have that three-headed monster uh, embarrassment of riches in a way for Southwestern at the quarterback position. No complaints here. Minute 31 left out of the timeout. It'll be Coleman Kerr in the shotgun. He has Elijah Smith to his right. Castilleja and Brandenburg are the wings on either side. Option and pitch out to Smith. Smith angling for the corner, and he goes for the pylon. Touchdown, Pirates. Tack on six for Southwestern. It's a 10-yard touchdown run by Elijah Smith. All three now have led touchdown drives for the Pirates. All three quarterbacks have done a solid job here at the University of the South, and it will be Herps here to try and make it 41-0 with a minute 24 left to play in the third. The kick is through the uprights, or excuse me, and not through the uprights. It's no good. And the score will remain 40 to nothing here as Southwestern putting it on. The Swanee Tigers will be back in a moment on SHN Sports. to try and score their first points of the game. Already waiting for the kickoff from Herps. Will Herps lining it up. The Suwannee Tigers will have Cyrus McCullough back deep to receive. Herps puts toe to leather. This one's a booming kick that will go to the four-yard line fielded by McCullough there. Takes it down the right numbers. Evades a couple tackles before he is brought down inside of the 20. A nice tackle made there for the Pirates and 
minute 16 left and inside their own territory at around the call it 18 yard line will be the Swanee Tigers trying to score for the first time this afternoon here. Looks like they're going to have to maybe, unless they get a big explosive play, wait until the fourth quarter to get on the scoreboard. Doris drops back, scans to his right, throws over the middle, and Mays has his hands on the football but unable to get around it in time, and that'll be incomplete. It'll bring up second and ten. Ball on the 18-yard line. Dars. And the shotgun looks immediately to his left, throws to his left, it's completed, and almost getting away from an ankle tackle. Thankfully, Josiah Minifield was able to get there after the completion to Bigman. Play action. It'll be a pass going deep as Darius has hit as he threw. He overthrows his intended receiver, and that was Cyrus McCullough, and that'll bring up third and ten. Excuse me, second and ten. They were quick on the sidelines there. 45 seconds left to the stop. The, the clock stops after the incomplete pass. Quick throw over to the right side off the fingertips incomplete. It was a pass to Drew Maddox who has been one of the more consistent receivers for Swanee and that brings up third down. Opportunity here for Southwestern to get the football back before the start of the fourth quarter. They can get a stop here then force the punt. Swanee with trips to the right. McGee in the backfield. Dropping back, Dar scans to the right, looks to the middle, tries to tuck it and run, but he is brought down, and the stop made the tackle from Chris Crawford. Tackle for loss all the way back to the 30-yard line. A loss of four makes it fourth and 14, so obviously the punting unit coming out for Swanee. And Brandenburg and Cassiea will receive this punt waiting at around the 30 to 35 yard line. I think Swanee will go ahead and let this clock expire. They'll hold this punt off until the start of the fourth quarter. So, three quarters complete. It's 40 to nothing. It's been all Southwestern Pirates here on SHN Sports. Stick around and watch the rest of the season opener here on SHN Sports. The start of the fourth quarter will be a punt from Swanee to Southwestern, and that, that's been this game in a microcosm for the Swanee offense as they've been unable to find the end zone, and they've missed a 53-yarder on their only field goal attempt of the game. A rugby-style punt by Mays will send this one towards the sideline. It takes a very good Swanee bounce past the 25-yard line towards the 20. It'll be downed 
near the 21 yard line and that'll be the worst field position for the offense in a little while as all three starting quarterbacks have led drives or excuse me all three quarterbacks here for Southwestern have led drives that ended in touchdowns with this ball game being 40 to nothing the offense will almost play a little bit of game manage I imagine the rest of the way try and get some clock off and keep this this clock running it'll be Coleman Kerr in the shotgun to his right Devin Shaw running the option and keeping it after faking the pitch is Kerr and a fumble and that's recovered by Swanee so Swanee with their best opportunity to score here we'll have it somewhere around their 22 the southwestern 22 yard line called to 24 officially and 1437 the first offensive play from scrimmage in the fourth quarter for Southwestern they turn it over as Coleman Kerr fell awkwardly and now it'll be an opportunity for Alex Dars to get his team in the end zone play action he drops back scans to the right fires to the end zone and it's a touchdown for the Tigers coming down is Colin May and he gets the 24-yard touchdown, and the shutout is no more for Southwestern on the first play from scrimmage after the fumble. And, Chuck, what did you see from down there? Well, I just think they uh, caught Southwestern in a transition from offense to defense. They were able to get their offense out there quickly, get a playoff quickly. Receiver broke open there in the back of the end zone, and it just took a nice pass, and it's a touchdown. And... Uh, you know, I think Coach Austin will, will uh, accept a single touchdown uh, after a turnover like that, but uh, he's pretty close to a perfectionist, so maybe not. Yeah, yeah, well, we'll have to see what happens. Uh, obviously, <laughs> I won't bring that up after. The, yeah, yeah. It's, it's something for film session, I suppose. Exactly. As, uh, There's plenty to work on. Yeah, the, there will be plenty here in the first game of the season. But, you know, Chuck, uh, not many penalties. We'll go ahead and say that. That's not too bad for the first game of the season. That's correct. They have uh, they've played well in all phases of the game. Sure, there's been breakdowns in football. Things are not going to bounce your way all the time. And during those situations, they've uh, responded in a positive way, except for this last turnover here. And they just, again, uh, I think uh, Swanee just took advantage of the change in uh, units and quickly snapped the ball before the uh, Pirate defense could really get set. Yeah, and that's probably the result of the touchdown there as Swanee gets their first six up at the point after attempt as Brody Palmer sent it through. And now the ensuing kickoff, the first time since the opening kickoff that Swanee will go ahead and be able to send it to Southwestern. Castilleja and Brandenburg are back deep to receive as well as for Southwestern. Austin Casieja. And a delay here as I'm not sure why it's taking so long for the officials to go ahead and allow the kickoff to happen. Here it is as Palmer will put toe to leather and send this one Deep, it'll be taken by Austin Casieja at the five yard line. Down the right numbers, cuts to the middle, looking for some space across the 15. Finds a block, able to shed a defender at the 20 yard line. Flag comes in, usually, I guess, in the area of a block in the back, but a good enough return there for Casieja. Chuck, did you happen to catch what that flag might have been? I did not see, I saw the flag come in. I did not see the infraction, however, but like you said, that is typically where there's going to be a block in the back. Generally, the uh, uh, offsides against the kicking team is going to be way up near where the ball was kicked. So generally speaking, this is against the return team, and they are facing that way to step off the yardage. Yeah. 
It'll be a holding officially. And with that, we will go ahead and mark off five yards from the end of the run. So for the end of the return, I should say. And with 14.20 left to play, Swanee scored their first touchdown in the ensuing kickoff. Southwestern will have to work with a solid 90 yards in front of them. It'll be Coleman Kerr still in at quarterback, and he fumbled on the last series. He's hoping to redeem himself here. Here's Devin Shaw to his right. Option. Pitch to Brandenburg. Brandenburg trying to shake off a defender, but instead he will be hit in the backfield for a loss as it was a nice stop there made by Walker Welthery. And they mark that ball back to the seven-yard line. So second and 13. Second and 13 from the seven. Coleman Kerr in the shotgun. Will hand it off. It's a run up the middle for Devin Shaw. And Shaw will go ahead and pick up yards back to the original line of scrimmage. So a gain of three. Brings up third and ten. Sets up a passing down here for Coleman Kerr. We haven't seen him throw the ball too much today as he did have that very nice catch to Anthony Stevens earlier or passed Anthony Stevens earlier, and the catch was made nicely by Stevens. Ten seconds left on the play clock. Shaw will go in motion out to the slot on the left side, and it'll be a keeper for Coleman Kerr, and he doesn't get anywhere near the first down marker. That brings up fourth down, and the punting unit will come out for Southwestern. Opportunity for Philip Keyes here to get a look as he sends this one spiraling to the return man. And then I think there might be as no whistle here. I thought there might have been a uh, little bit of interference, but no. Instead, the ball comes down and it will be picked up by Southwestern coming up with it, I believe. It was Peyton Vaughn, the freshman. So Vaughn comes up with it. And Chuck, what did you see down there? I didn't quite catch what happened. It looked like there might have been a flag, but no flag. Uh, there was no flag because he tripped over his own man. Oh, wow. I saw they tripped over a man. I didn't quite see that. It was his yeah, own. it was his own player that, that caused him to fall forward. He tripped over him and couldn't feel the ball. Well, that's how that one goes. And it'll be another opportunity for the Pirates offense as they empty out the backfield here for Coleman Kerr, who's in the shotgun. First and 10 for the Pirates. And nice catch made there by Austin Cassiao for first down getting into Swanee territory. And we Shotgun here for Coleman Kerr. He's going to direct traffic and send Shaw to his right side as two receivers go on both sides. It's a quick pass and a nice catch made and bringing it down, moving the sticks forward following that catch for the Pirates. It'll be Gilpin in now here on first and 10. Gilpin tried to cut it to the left, instead took it back to the right and was able to maybe pick up two yards on the play, second and eight.
clock moving here, which is what the Pirates want considering the score. It's 40 to 7. They just want to get out of here with this victory and limit the wear and tear on the team. Back in the game, Coleman Kerr, they're kind of going back and forth. Gilpin getting some packages every now and again and a little bit of a broken play. Kerr will go ahead and decide to keep it himself as he cuts back and might have barely made it back to the line of scrimmage. As, in fact, he'll get back to the original line of scrimmage, lose two on the play, third and 10. Johnson with the tackle for Swanee. It's a pass over to the left side. It's incomplete in and out of the hands of the intended receiver on the far side as Anthony Stevens. And I thought I heard a yell for a field goal attempt. Let's see if that's what the Pirates elect to do here. 9.53 left is where the clock stops after the incomplete pass. And it will be a long one here. Ball's on the 22-yard line, so this will be a 39-yard field goal attempt for Will Herps. Herps gets the hold. He sends it, and it is just wide right. But a flag on the play, and this could be roughing the kicker. Chuck, what did you see? It's definitely at least running into the kicker. We'll see what the call is. We'll see how severe they call it. So it will be the five-yard variety. Of They'll have another kicker. opportunity, though. Yeah, and that'll make it a 34-yarder should they elect to go for it again. And But Will Herbst, who just took a little bit of a tumble, go back out to the field. So fourth and five, ball on the 17-yard line, and a timeout will be called by Swanee. We'll take it with them. Swanee trailing Southwestern 40-7 to here as the University of the South is also opening up their season, but Southwestern's having the better day. We'll be back in a moment on SHN Sports. Pirates are going to go for it on fourth and five from their from the Tigers' 17-yard line. It'll be Coleman Kerr in the shotgun. Shaw behind him. Mingo in motion to the left side and Casieja and Brandenburg. Going for it on fourth down. Coleman Kerr fakes the handoff, passes over to the left side. It's caught by Robinson. Robinson tried to fight forward for the first down, and he will get enough to move the chains. And the Pirates stay on the field. It was a running into the kicker, followed by a uh, going forward on fourth and five, which Robinson just came down with the catch. And that'll go ahead and move the chains. But let's see if there are officials who are saying that he was marked short. It will be a first down for the Pirates despite the conversation from the officials. Clock starts moving again at 9.36 left in the fourth quarter. 
It's a handoff to Shaw, and Shaw bounces around the trenches, trying to work his way outside, still on his feet, picking up a couple yards on first and ten. Brings up about second and eight. So, second and goal from the eight. There actually is still an opportunity to pick up a first down, I beg your pardon. So, it's second and seven from the eight. And then Brandenburg on the carry was able to get over to the left side of the field. And it's third down as Brandenburg was just short of the first. Third and three here. One yard, or excuse me, it's a opportunity here to pick up first down. But I think they're looking for the end zone here as Coleman Kerr takes a direct snap. He is tackled in the backfield, though. The stop made by Swanee as Alex Garfield was the one who made him miss the end zone, and that brings up Fourth and one from the three. Field goal unit might have to be ready here as a running into the kicker on a 39-yard attempt is part of what kept this drive alive. And then a first down picked up after the fourth and five set up on the ensuing play. Here's Coleman Curran, the shotgun, going for it on fourth and two from the three. And he's going to take it out to the right side and go in for the end zone for a touchdown. The carry was made by number 39 for Southwestern. And tacking on six more, Southwestern. Forty-six to seven. Chuck, what do you got for us? I just wanted to comment on the toughness of the Pirate quarterbacks because this option has been running all day, and the Sewanee defense has been making sure to deliver a hit as they should defensively on the option to the quarterback. Kerr took a shot on that pitch, but he made a great pitch and able to get the score from the tailback. So fantastic toughness today from the Southwestern quarterbacks. All three have taken shots and. Uh, you know, give Sewanee a little credit. They play tough defense, but they are no match for this Pirate offense. No, yeah, they are not a match at all today as the extra point was kicked through. I beg your pardon, folks. I have my roster on my phone, but my phone will not open up the roster as it is overheated. We are out here in the stands with the rest of the crowd and these wasps that seem to have taken a liking to me as well. And Nathan Heights a little freaked out. Just some bugs. I know you hate wasps, but they won't sting you if they find you funny, so make a joke. Anyway, uh, as we continue on here, it is 7.34 left in the fourth quarter. 47-7 your score, Southwestern leading Swanee. And the kickoff here by Herps will go ahead and a fair catch called for by Mays. Mays hits the deck, but fair catch will still be honored and... Swanee will have possession here as with 7.34 left to play in the fourth quarter, they want to try and get on the scoreboard at least one more time here. And Chuck, we'll go ahead and down to you. Yeah, I don't expect the uh, Pirate defense to lay down here and allow Sewanee to drive down the field. They might want to score, but the Pirates want to uh, show that that last touchdown was an aberration. It was a little bit of an aberration as they got the ball on southwestern territory. An incomplete pass here to start off and not to bring up second and ten as they will go ahead and start from their own 25-yard line thanks to the fair catch. Pass incomplete. And... Doris still out there operating the offense. 
Scans to the left, fires, and it's a dangerous pass intended for Mays and threw in the double coverage right there, defended well by Southwestern. A couple Pirates there as Caleb Richardson was the one helping out Hayden Smith, closing in on that one, and it brings up third and ten. No run plays here as Swanee still wants to conserve as much time as they can to try and get on the scoreboard, but the victor of this game has been decided, and Southwestern will probably improve to 1-0 despite several miracles, and a catch there by Mays will be close to a first down. They will move the chains, and that will be a first down for Swanee as they will avoid the three and out. Pirates show blitz, and here it comes here as Dars will roll out to the left, and he's looking for a block. He was able to pick up a first down his feet. The ball gets loose and then is picked up again by Swanee. Swanee will go ahead and have the – yeah, Colin May is the one who was able to bring it in as they'll go ahead and move the ball. Move the chains. 6.47 left to play in the ball game. As the chains are taking their time to be moved because there is an injured player on the field, and we're going to go ahead and take a break and let him be tended to. Donovan Conley, the injured pirate, helped off of the field as play will resume here. First and ten. It's Swanee in southwestern territory, and a pass completed to Maddox, and Maddox is able to pick up the first down out to the 35-yard line. That moves the chains yet again as Swanee trying to put together a drive here with 6.30 left in the fourth quarter. 
The clock keeps running, and they're looking to score for a second time here in the fourth. It's a play action, a drop back, and a pass to the left, and the pass is caught enough for a gain of about four yards. Brings up second and six for Swanee. Dropping back again, another pass from Doris into the end zone, but a flag comes in, that's pass interference. And Chuck, did that happen in the end zone or was it outside the end zone? It was outside of the end zone, right around the five yard line, definitely interference. Um, the guys kind of got their legs tangled up. It could have been incidental, but the defender for Southwestern got his hands on the receiver and that's gonna get the flag every time. A couple officials saw that as uh, there were a couple flags, but probably for the same penalty here. And that'll be marked off. So it's a 15 yard penalty, automatic first down, and obviously as the 15 yards moves the ball forward, it'll be marked at the 14 yard line. So first and 10 from the 14. Darce in the shotgun. Play action. He's scrambling around the pocket and he will be brought down from behind. And a nice play made there by Southwestern's Gage Bernard. As he kept that scramble from really going anywhere. Brings up second and 10. Doris watches the safety blitz come, passes, and makes a complete pass to the eight-yard line. So call it a gain of four on the play. Brings up third down. Opportunity for the Pirates to get away with this possession with just a field goal opportunity. Under five minutes to play in the fourth. Darce will lob this one to the end zone and it's just off of the fingertips. No flag comes in, incomplete. Swanee sideline didn't like it as Alan Puri will not come down with the catch and that'll bring up fourth down. There is a flag on the play, so go ahead and watch that flag. You see what it was by chance? You know, it's kind of odd. The back judge didn't throw his flag, but the side judge here, uh, the line judge, did throw his flag. Uh, there was a little bit of contact. Looked incidental to me, though. It is pass interference, and that will give a new set of downs and create a first and goal opportunity for Suwannee. So the football gods going ahead and letting them get a first and goal from the three. It will be Doris in the shotgun. Quick pass, and it's intercepted. Taking it out to the left side and then bringing it down out to the 24. The Pirates having another pick as Southwestern comes up with the ball. And a nice interception made there by the defensive end, Keyshawn Castle. So the senior coming up with a highlight play defense and it'll be the Southwestern Pirates getting the ball back at the 22. Sorry, what's that, Chuck? You're giving me some hand signals. Well, yeah, I was just wanting to let you know that was pass was broken up by uh, a, South, a Southwestern DB number seven and it was knocked straight in the air. Great job by the defense. Sorry about that. <laughs> and no worries here. 540 left to play and... It will be the Southwestern here pitching it out, spinning and moving the ball forward as Southwestern is there, excuse me, not able to move the ball forward. And we're getting into the guys not on the depth chart here as that was J.J. Slack going ahead and pushing it in. J.J. Slack actually is on the depth chart as a slot receiver. So I beg your pardon, J.J., as... He had the carry there, first time we've said his name today. Was a loss though. Yeah. 
Loss of six officially. Here's a handoff and finding a lot of space and picking up the first down and finishing through contact for the Pirates. A nice run there. As Southwestern picks up the first down, it comes from Brandon Jennings. So Jennings lines up in the backfield there with Gilpin. Or excuse me, I don't believe that's Gilpin. I think they might have a, it is C Coleman Kerr. Or excuse me, Gilpin here keeps it. And Gilpin takes it across the 50. One man to beat as he gets to the 30. And he trips up a little bit and goes out of bounds on his own terms at the 21-yard line. Gilpin there a little bit covered up by Brandon Jennings, still able to, Surprised, uh, get covered up by the defense and uh, get away from him. You can see why he was uh, Mr. Texas football with that move, right? Oh, yeah. he Just is had a, to keep his feet. He has a nice athleticism about him, and as he gets a little more developed, Chuck, uh, you could really see him potentially being a dual-threat quarterback. Well, he's got a, quite a quarterback in front of him, one to learn from, two to compete with, and three, both of them to grow together. So, great job recruiting by the Southwestern coaching staff an excellent coaching job as well 312 left to play in the fourth quarter Southwestern trying to add on one more score before we head back to Georgetown Texas which will be tomorrow officially so the Pirates can celebrate tonight it'll be Coleman Kerr in the shotgun with Brandon Jennings lined up to his left. Jennings will block for Kerr as he tries to go behind his left guard and barely pick up a couple yards. Picks up four officially, so it'll be second and six. Kerr will look to take it outside. He's under pressure, and he'll just go ahead and hit the deck. And I think he'll lose a couple yards there. As that brings up third down. Lost it all the way back to make it third and 11. Under two minutes to play in the fourth. Coleman Kerr in the shotgun. Bobbles the snap, and he is hit as he was able to collect it. That could have ended up a lot worse. The ball comes out after he's down, and Sawani thought they would maybe try and go after it one more time. That will not fool the officials, and it will be time for a field goal unit. Clock still moving here. A minute 30 left to play in the fourth quarter, and... Southwestern will probably have to play defense at least one or two more plays as they're letting the clock run down a solid amount. Five seconds left on the play clock. They might have to go ahead and burn a timeout here. They will burn their second timeout, and the clock will stop at 109. Pirates fans loving the fact that their their team are about to go one and zero on the season. One oh nine left to play in the fourth. And the Pirates break out of their timeout. They're going to attempt a field goal here. Ball's on the 18. 
35 yard attempt. In fact, it's a fake here as Coleman Kerr will almost throw an interception. In fact, it will be picked off, and instead of the turnover on downs, they're going to go ahead and have the interception taken by Sewanee's cornerback, Wesley Porter. So he, rec he gets the interception. Sewanee here will have the ball at their own three-yard line, a minute three left, and... Southwestern here will play some defense. For the first time today, we are seeing Cooper Hancock in a quarterback. He throws a quick out route, and it is... Complete. It'll bring up second and six after the gain of four. Ball pushed over to the right side, and Michael McGee takes it to the wide side of the field. He moves it closer to the chains, and that'll bring up third and one. So Southwestern with 15 seconds left until they are officially 1-0 on the season. Rolling out to the left side, it's Hancock. Hancock will elect to tuck and run. He will slide, and he picks up the first down, and there's one second left to let the chains move, and then once they're set, the game will, clock will officially hit zero. So your final score from Sewanee, Tennessee, the University of the South. It's Southwestern 47, Sewanee 7. The, fan, the teammates will shake hands here as Southwestern was able to open things up pretty well. We'll go ahead and get your thoughts real quick, Chuck, before we send it to you for the interview. Yeah, this is a fantastic uh, showing by the Pirates, really in all three phases of the game. Uh, lots of positives to look at and build on. A uh, few negatives to uh, work on and perfect. You know, Coach Austin's a bit of a perfectionist, so you know he's going to break down that film and look at all of the things that need to be fixed. And I believe uh, next game is on the 21st. Yep, next week is off week. So have some time to work week. on it. Yeah, next week is an off week, and uh, then they will go ahead and uh, play their first game at Burkleback Field as we go ahead and let the players go ahead and get a handshake. The... Pirates will do officially approve to 1-0. and Coach Austin will join you in a moment. Is that what he was relaying down yeah, there? Yeah, he was letting me know that it's going to be after the fight song because, you know, you, you can't have an interview while everybody's singing. So. Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> yeah, and uh, we'll go ahead and let the Swanee Tigers have their fight song as the – go ahead and also turn off Chuck as uh, we uh, look back at it. It was – Southwestern really jumping out right away with a uh, play, a drive on their uh, a score on their first drive. Austin Emery with a four-yard touchdown run, and that was a eight-play, 61-yard drive in three minutes and 56 seconds. And then Southwestern would strike again as that would be the trend of the afternoon as Brandenburg had a 66-yard pass from Austin Emery, and that was a four-play, 85-yard drive that was one-upped, and it was only a minute 19 spent on the field by Southwestern. Then with 9.44 left to play in the second quarter, Austin Emery had a one-yard touchdown run, part of a six-play, 67-yard drive that only lasted two minutes and 21 seconds. The extra point was missed this time, and it was 20 to nothing. That was the only scoring in the entire first half. And then in the third quarter, Southwestern was the first to score with 8.30 left. Austin Emery had a two-yard touchdown run, part of an 11-play, 57-yard drive, 57 yard drive, five minutes and 31 seconds, a bit more methodical that time around. And then in the third quarter, with 6.11 left, 
Anthony Stevens had a pretty nice 26-yard pass from Austin Emery, part of a three-play, 36-yard drive with a minute 26 left. And then in the third quarter, the last score was made by Rosario Hernandez as he had a 10-yard touchdown run, and it was a six-play, 53-yard drive. And then in the fourth quarter, Schwanee finally scored. Colin May had a 24-yard touchdown pass from Alex Darris, and the point after was good. It was the only play of the drive after a interception made by Schwanee. And then the Pirates scored last as they scored first as well. 7.34 left, Southwestern. It was Cody Jackson with a three-yard touchdown run, making it 47-7. We're going to go ahead and send it down to Chuck. Chuck, who do you got with you? Uh, down here with uh, offensive player of the game, David Brandenburg, and uh, defensive player of the game, Garrett Womack, and, of course, no, head that. coach. I, they did good, and I wanted to interview them. Oh, okay. So there we you have go. to see the film before we're going to anoint that, but they, okay. did good. Well, they both did pretty well. I think they're up there. They got a good shot then, but we'll, well, we'll talk to Coach first. The, you can call them the SHN players of the game. There you go, SHN there players you. of the <laughs> game. Uh, both of these guys had fantastic first half, but we're going to talk to Coach first. Coach, lots of positives, a few negatives. Uh, you got a week to work, a bye week coming up to work on it before you uh, have a home game. Uh, give us your thoughts. With our, our young offense and our depth is young on defense, it's probably good to have an early bye week. We usually like it later, but I think we'll make the most of it. You know, we saw three young quarterbacks that have a lot to see on film and a lot to work on. Uh, so I think the bye week will come at a, a nice time. We'll get healthy, and then it'll be a grueling nine weeks, but hopefully these next two weeks will get better. And, you know, the, the coach's adage is always you get better before the, get the make the biggest jump between your first and second right. game. So if we can do that, we should be okay. Well, and uh, those guys have a, a decent offensive line in front of them to help protect them, and they've got great skill guys. We've got one over here. Talk about those guys. Well, you know, David, you're going to see we're, we're counting on him. He's a, one of our most experienced guys. Uh, Ant, Ant, Ant Stevens had the touchdown. Yeah. We're, relying on, we're relying on those guys to really make plays and make the quarterbacks look good as the quarterbacks, you know, get, get up to speed and, and get a lot of experience. Well, and they're young guys, and so there's a lot of room for them to grow here um, under your tutelage. And so we look forward to many positive uh, outings with your, your offense. But real quick, let's talk about the defensive side of the ball. Maybe the most impressive part of today's game was how well the defense played really throughout. Talk about your defense. Our defense did fantastic, and they, you know, they deserved to shut out. Our offense made it kind of, you know, kind of rough. Uh, kind of real rough thing in that our offense put our defense on a short field. Right, that, that flip but, of the units. Is yeah, tough. when when we had our, our starting group out, our you know they didn't get much of anything, less than 100 yards in the first half. So I think our defense did great, and I've said all along, anyone that, that's interviewed me. Our defense is going to have to set the tone. Our offense is going to be good, but we may need a little bit of time with our young quarterbacks. And our defense definitely gave us a, they gave us a great chance to win. Well, and, and most of the time early in the season, the defense is a little ahead of the offense. But your defense looks like it's, it's mid-season level already. Yeah, we had 10 starters from last year. Um, we're nine stars from last year on the field today, so we were in good shape. They did a great job. That's a fantastic job by those guys, and great job by your staff, right, Coach. You get with these guys. Thank you. And we'll start here with David Brandenburg. David, a lot of big runs. You got some uh, swing passes, set the tone early, uh, you know, and you took some shots throughout the game, but you just popped back up like it wasn't nothing. Talk about your experience out there today. Yeah, absolutely. I took a big shot over there on the goal line. Uh, it's always kind of deflating when you get up and you pat the guy on the head and say, good hit, bud. Uh, that's kind of what I what, what my motto is there. Uh, yeah, really proud of our guys the way we came out and uh, just put it to them right 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 in the beginning. Um, you know, defense like coach was saying is going to have to carry us in a lot of situations. And you know, goose egg through most of the game, like coach said, uh, short field touchdown at the end of the game really is a true shutout uh, game. Uh, we're going to be really relying on them and really proud of what they did today. Yeah, they did a fantastic job offensively um, for several series in the first quarter and several series. In the third quarter, you were unstoppable as an offense, and and you did so under different quarterbacks. Talk about how it is to adjust from from one quarterback to the next quarterback to the next quarterback. Right, there's not much of an adjustment that we have to make. We know uh, as an offensive unit, we respect each guy the same. We're going to go out there, we're going to do our job, we're going to do one our one eleventh, and we're going to trust that the quarterback, whoever he is out there, is going to be uh, you know prepared to do what he has to do. Now, with that being said, you know when Landry's out there, a freshman, there are a few times when you know, I notice something on the line that they're doing that's a little different, and I'll help them out, and, and, you know, we'll get an audible, we'll get a change. But 
But for the most part, we're just expecting each guy to, you know, do their job, and, and they did today, and we're really proud of that. It's pretty impressive that you're uh, helping your young quarterback along with, hey, maybe we should do this on yeah. this play. Right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Fantastic. Got to do what I got to do. Well, you, you set the tone as a team for the season. You know, big win today here on the road, a big road trip. You got a week off. You're going to be back preparing for a game at home. Um, you know, going forward, uh what do you think about your, your team as we head into conference play? I know next week's not conference, but as we head that way, what do you think? Right. My initial thoughts are we just had to come out here and, and show these boys what Texas football was. Mm -hmm. uh, they were playing Tennessee ball, obviously. <laughs> yeah, obviously. Um, so, you know, conference is going to be a different level of intensity, different level of competition. So we got a lot to learn, a lot to get better at. And, uh, you know, having that bye week next week I think is really important for us, and we'll take advantage of it and work really hard. and and you know make the most of it and come out ready week one really re week two week one ready to get going great fantastic congratulations good luck in two weeks and we'll talk to womack you can go on ahead and head back so we're here with garrett womack defensive player of the game you know you heard us in the last two interviews we've been saying a lot of positive things about your defense talk about your your teammates uh how it is to work with guys like that yeah i'm pumped for the season especially after this game i mean we knew we were going to come out here and get after it um, but to put on a show like that was awesome. You know, a couple interceptions, a few close, you know, forced fumbles and stuff like that, a lot of sacks. Uh, so it was exciting. And, you know, like Coach said, we got nine guys coming back. So, you know, I expect all nine of those guys to ball out. Well, and and, and Sewanee had a lot of talent. It's not – they weren't a slouch, but uh, I think they were in a bit of shock after the first quarter at how we shut them down. I think so too. Uh, their fans were pretty loud, but they started to get quiet after a little while, and uh, the team just kind of tapered off, and the energy level dropped after we put it to them. Right, as a defensive player, there's nothing like quieting a home crowd, right? It's my favorite thing to do. <laughs> yeah. So you had a, a couple of big plays today. Talk about those. Yeah, I was excited to get out here. You know, it's been a while, yes. and uh, yeah, yeah, I got a, I got a couple sacks. You know. I, my teammates set me up. We, we like to run stunts with the linebackers and stuff, and we're really good at communicating today. So, How does it feel when, when you come open through the line of scrimmage like that? You see a quarterback standing up just waiting to get hit. Oh, it's the best feeling. That's what I live for. <laughs> That's what I try and do. <laughs> well, fantastic. We're going to go celebrate, Garrett. Good job, man, and we'll see you on the bus. Back to you, Carl. Thank you, Chuck. As we wrap things up. It's 47 to 7, the final score here. Southwestern officially improves to 1 and 1. Sewanee officially falls to, oh, excuse me, Southwestern improves to 1 and 0 oh on the start of the season, and Sewanee falls to 0 oh and 1. Got my uh, records added in there combined. But no, the first game of the season, a good one for 